you doing everybody? Glad to see you again. We've got uh, a lot done. This is our little pantry we've been working on. I, I think I mentioned we were doing it. I, I showed you the very beginning of it. This is done except for the trim. We have to clock all corners and then put our trim boards up. We can do that with the pantry loaded. Uh, it's about half full right now from what it'll hold. But all of our storage space we had was maxed right out. All of it. And this big guy behind me was sitting in our entryway where I needed to put sheetrock up and haven't been able to do it. Now guess what? We get to roll on. A lot of strange stuff going on in the world. I almost said a bad word right there. This is stuff. Okay. We have to take care of our home fronts first. We have to. We've got no choice. I know you're seeing shortages in the stores. Uh, this is our normal stock. This is not bunched up, beefed up. This is what we, most country people will tell you that. You remember when your grandparents and your parents had a pantry? A lot of times old pantries are tore out in the, uh, when they put indoor plumbing in, that's where the uh, bathroom first started there. Or a small child's bedroom started right in the pantry. Pantries are kind of a thing of the past. I'm going to tell you what. If, if you have the ability to garden, you can, and you're tired of your freezer sitting somewhere you didn't want it, you wives know. You know what I'm talking about. This freezer can be a pain in your butt, can't it? But you need it. Uh, other than I don't think right now you're going to find a freezer very easy, but we have this and we got a chest freezer that's, that's not empty. We've actually been using our chest freezer uh, as sawhorses uh, because we're cutting sheathing and everything in here. Uh, this is a 6 by 8 inside area. This is what this is. The camera makes it look crazy. It's not like a store. It's just a little area. Uh, this used to be our enclosed part of our front porch. Well, we had the bright idea we was going to go ahead and go quite a long time with a nice part of it enclosed, part of it not. Well, the not part lasted about 10 years, like you'd expect. And, you know, me and Colin are pretty lightweight, so, yeah, you know. Well, when we started going through the floor and the steps started crumbling apart, we thought, well, that's time. So last fall, we uh, built a, a smaller enclosed front porch. With this is a plan. This is our plan. This is not a new plan. Uh, yeah, it, in today's world, it come into play. It really did. But there's things about pantries that are nice. If you can, and you want to keep potatoes, you can see them in the corner. Bags of potatoes down here, about 150 pounds is all right here. Probably ought to have a few more. But a tiny, tiny little air conditioner in this room right up here I mean little guy when that floor that temperature comes to the bottom of this floor that will keep your taters all summer uh, heating we got obviously we got to buy full door now the heating of the deal it just hot air goes in the top in the winter yeah from our wood stove wood and coal is what we wear and it goes out the bottom of a louver door. You keep it closed. Well, I tell you what, we hung this louver door. They're not like I was used to. This was actually a nice louver door compared to what we've seen. But, boy, that thing was tricky. Ooh, ooh. Yeah. That took us, what do you think, call it an over an hour. You turn three yeah, on. probably. By the time I, it fell three times. I can hang an entrance door in freaking 30 minutes, <laughs> as long as everything's right there. It took me an hour to put a freaking two little pair. I saw a pair of shutters. You know? Think about it. So, anyway, that's that. Um, we need to get back to the saw as quick as possible. I hope directly. I'm gonna. I'm, I'm working out how to ship things. Uh, we've got a couple. We, we need. We got about three, four items that need to be shipped. Two saws, three saws maybe. And uh, I will be getting to you, Robert. You're one. Yeah, we got that blue thunder. Um, I just got to get a chance to run that. I haven't been in the woods. We've had rain. I'm working inside because we've had rain and snow and sleet. And, and uh, I see a high stump jumper. What do you think, buddy? 
The same boat, uh, rain, snow, and sleet. It's sunny and snowing at the same time. Yeah. <laughs> That's weird. Yeah, it is. Well, there's things about cannon jars that'll get you, and I want to show you one little trick that I know. Um, these jars here on the right, they're last year's tomatoes. Now, it's ideal, whatever length of your shelf, you cut yourself a board, cover about three or four wide, and you can keep stacking them cannon jars, but I'll tell you what, if you stack them on top of each other, especially these narrow mouths, they'll tip right over. I mean, they'll just go them like that. But if you sandwich them with a board wide enough to cover four jars wide and then a depth of your shelf, they don't go nowhere. And then when you're done with them, and in this case here, every pantry's got a little cubby hole that is for little used or not as much used items. Okay, so you, you just, this happens to be a piece of our flooring in our kitchen. And uh, in this case right here, you, we're only doing this for four jars. You can't stack wide mouth and narrow mouth jars on the same layer because they're two different heights. You women know all that. But you can stack these. Now what that does, that can't, ties them together. Our shelves are designed for two deep. I've seen my grandmother go four deep doing this. But she gets a bigger area at a time. Uh, to cover on these cannon jars, you, anything, anything in cannon jars, you can do that. It, uh, it's a good thing. I just put them up there. They're not in order. Barb will walk in here. That's not where that belongs, and I know it. But it is what it is. But I'll tell you what we're gonna do. We're gonna grab a few of these taters out of this bag, and I'm gonna show you something. We'll be right back. Okay, what we're doing, you're going to get the Iron Horse breakfast taters. That's what you're going to get. My favorite knife. It's an old hickory. I've had this since I was very young. Handles, buzz. You ever get a favorite knife? This works for me. No, it's probably not proper, but I'm going to tell you what, I'm no chef either. But what we're doing, now I'm going to, let me get a backstory on this. I started driving tractor trailer about when I turned 18. Now, I was legal to drive in the state, but I, I went over the road just a little bit here, a little bit there. Next thing you know, I'm going to Texas and California, you know, and I never got caught at it, so it must have been all right. But out in Albany, New York, there's this Union 76 truck stop. I wonder if that's still there. Now, there was this Irish family. It was a mother and a father and a daughter run the kitchen in there. And uh, I like going in there when I had to load early. I'd go to Albany and I'd have breakfast. They had the best darn t fried taters. Now, these were good for breakfast, lunch, supper, anything. And I asked her, I said, what makes your fried potatoes so stinking good? And she said, just that Irish touch. Irish know potatoes, don't they? They know the deal. Yeah, yeah buddy. Well, I'm going to tell you what. I'm going to share a secret I've kept all my life to myself. Very few people know this one, of what makes good fried potatoes. But here's what we're going to do. Nothing fancy about what it is, just cube the darn things up. I don't preheat my pan for these, and there's a reason why. It really is. And, uh, this cutting board is not a bought and cutting board. It's maple. Maple has a unique characteristic that it kills bacteria. That's why those of you that cut meat, you know the deal. I know what you got. You got maple. You might have that new nylon, but that nylon needs to be changed once in a while. As you cut, you can cut bacteria right in it. Square's about that size right there. 
not too big, not too small. I'll tell you what the potatoes to use, and it does make a difference. Reds don't work as good, them Yukon Gold, stuff like that. Kennebec, or uh, a good baking potato, like a Russo. These happen to be Kennebecs right here. That's what these are. Um, we've got our outside plants started. I might show them to you here in a bit. Some of them are starting to come up. We got these. You see our lights real funky in this kitchen? There's no kitchen lights on. These are big skylights up here. Uh, Barb can't see too good. She has a macular degeneration, and uh, it's affected her eyes pretty bad. So, old Colin brought back. He says, hey, Dad, you want a sneeze guard? I go, what the heck's a sneeze guard? He says, well, he works at doing commercial appliances. And, well, apparently... Uh, Somebody ordered one that was wrong dimensions or holes wrong or whatever. I can't remember the whole story. Slightly offset hole. Was that a casino? Oh, it was, really. Is that what it was? Slightly oh, off, yep. offset hole? Yep. Well, I'll tell you what happened. It, uh, Barb seen that. Oh, yeah, he got me in trouble. I drugged that home in my van. It took up all the room in my van. <laughs> I drove... An hour and a half or two hours home with that thing stuffed in my pants. <laughs> well, what happened was, Barb seen that. She says, wow. It's three Can you make me a skylight out of that? Call it a, I, I didn't get a chance to say all the reasons why you can't do that. You're cutting through a tin roof. No, you can't. Call it says, sure can. It's three-eighths tempered glass. He says, it ain't going to break too done too easy. Whoops. Like, Whoops. <laughs> he throwed me under the bus. <laughs> well, guess what happened? We got the, we went and got some 1x12s. And we, uh, I'll have to show them to you someday. It's got to be when it ain't so bright. There's no sun out, but I'm going to tell you what, they gather more light than you think. That's what makes them nice for starting our little veggies. We named the board up. And right up next to the skylight, and we got trays of a little veggies started there. Well, what happened was, is uh, we get that up, and get it painted, and of course we had to learn a few things. How do you seal it? Learn a lot about tar. <laughs> we learned a lot about tar. That's what we learned. We learned the proper way to seal them up. We got them good. Skylights are known for leaking, but Barb wanted them, so she got them. Guess what? We ended up going up to local glass service and an old guy cuts glass he says you know I do think I got some store glass left for store front he says I'll give you a deal on a piece of that so he goes out there and he blows the dust off and he lays this great big sheet of this freaking glass up there and he cuts it zip 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 he says give me seventy five dollars I go what sure well so we got now oh, what the heck are they 18 inches wide by 8 foot, I yeah. think. Two of them in the kitchen, skylights. Well, Barb, it was up to Barb, we live in a glass house. Because she likes seeing them. Okay, so. Time to get our taters in the pan, guys. Just right. You don't want to overload your pan. You cook these with a lid off. Just nice one layer, that's all you want. Yeah, I like these smooth top stoves too. Call them about that for Barb. Guess what the ingredient was? That's right. Don't tell nobody about that, it's a secret. Paprika is a browning agent. And just about that much. Now watch this, you're going to get a charge out of that. It, uh, it's really quite interesting. You just kind of roll the potatoes around and you get, oh about, I, I use about a quarter inch of oil. We use canola oil. But uh, this makes good fried potatoes. Doesn't work so well for sliced ones, but cubed ones like this, and that, it already looks good, doesn't it? Okay, we're going to cook these. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to make some pepper steaks. We're going to go into that here in just a second. 
Okay, but the whole trick with these pan steaks are, is you get the cube steaks, you know, they run them through a cuber, and uh, they're generally flank steaks, you know. Uh, liberal amount of onion powder and black pepper on the meat. You roll it in flour. The way to tell if your uh, pan's warm enough, just a little drip of water come off. If it spatters, that means it's warm enough. You want your pan preheated. You want them to start sizzling. They're, they take about half the time potatoes do. Potatoes take about 30 minutes. But what you're doing is you're looking for your potatoes to, the grease to be nicely bubbling all the time. Otherwise, when it's doing that, the grease is not absorbing any potatoes. And, and you turn them every three to five minutes. That's the whole trick to making these. You want to keep turning them. And I don't use my spatula toward the end on them very hard because uh, they kind of crumble. I just shake my pan, put them back on. These are cooking real nice. Good job. Okay, we did it. That's what it looks like. You know what I love about these little jokers? They're nice and hard on the outside. And just as soft on the inside as you've ever seen. Now that's good eating. Ladies, these taters, if you got a man in the house that just likes his country cooking, this is country cooking. You're killing him, but you're cooking. You know that. But he's there for the love, and I'm going to tell you what, if you put a dent in the fender or you just plain need to light the mood up, you meet him at the door when he comes home with these taters and whatever's going, wearing nothing but a smile on Teddy, I'll guarantee you, you'll never see that dent in that car. Mm -mm. Worked on me, I'll guarantee you that. Okay, this is real simple, guys. These taters are really good. They We use them, I call them breakfast taters, but they, they're good for any meal. They really are. Call the stand here. You're going to wipe this plate here in a second. I'm thinking. Need some salt and pepper, son. And a fork. I think there's a few more taters in the pan there. The bar didn't get. But I want to talk to you. We started our little maters about 10 days ago. They're doing really good. Yeah, we're up there in the skylight. Just hung a board under the skylight. Muskmelon. Yep, yeah, we got watermelons started too, but they're not up yet, but the muskmelon are. Uh, cantaloupe. We started at enough zucchini for two hills. It's too early up to put them out right now, but you can see I'd better get warm quick. Them little jokers are tough. They're, they're not messing around. They want to grow. They really do. Um... Barb and I both grew up with depression parents. We lived through depression as children. And our grandparents had a lot of influence on us. Uh, they never wasted nothing. They saved paper bags. How is it gone? Pretty darn good. Pretty darn good. He's sitting there eating them taters, thinking this is a good lunch. It is a good lunch. It really is. It uh, works good. Next time, I'll uh, maybe I'll show you biscuits. I, I make a pretty good biscuit. They're easy to make. Anybody I've told the recipe to, they've done well with them. They, uh, but you can't you can't cut the recipe in half. That's some of them old recipes. You didn't do that because it don't work the same. But I'll show you. Anyways, back to the depression. You know we're in funny times. It could become hard times. I'm I'm getting ready. Poor people like us, we can't take much negative. Uh, we can't. It. Uh, we live in hard times. That's what being poor is. So we have to grow. So hopefully you understand why I had to stop for a couple weeks on saws. Jam out that pantry so we had room for food storage. Wait till you see cannon season. You won't believe how the operation we got for that. We're knocking together... Uh, this year greenhouse and we went up to local sawmill my logger buddy owns mill and he loaded my truck up with a bunch of two by fours we're gonna knock together a uh, two by four uh, 16 by 20 greenhouse 
for our tomatoes and other things that need to be in the hot house early. And uh, we're we're got some red potatoes eyeing right now. We're ready to take some of these ken kennebacks and put them in a box. I just put them in a box, let the darn things do what they do. Some people put like a wet rag in the box with them, but you can. It, it might help them quicker. I don't know. I've never done it. Once they get them eyes plant, but my uh, russets and one thing the other that I plant and my cannabacks, I'm not going to plant them till in June. I want them late fall. That way I can keep them all winter. We just got to get till then. We'll be eating vegetables out of a garden all summer. We always do. Uh, we always do. Uh, for the last two years, we haven't had much of a garden because, as most of you know, or some of you know, I had major back surgery and they, they put rods in my back. You know, there's a video on what I felt about that whole deal. And uh, old Doc said it's going to take two years hard for you if you like a human again. Uh, he was right. This is my second year. I'm doing good. I'm really doing good. And uh, so, good job, Doc. Thanks. And, uh, so now it's time to pump it up because what we've canned, we have some tomatoes left and, and uh, sweet potatoes. We grew, uh, two years ago, we grew some sweet potatoes. Had a prolific mess up. We didn't know we'd grow them up north. Uh, uh, our peach trees, we have peach trees. And uh, we planted Albertas. Albertas grow in the north. Don't let people think they don't. I'll show you them. They're budding now. I can't, I can't wait. They're the first trees to bud. I'm a little nervous of that. But them depression people, I told you, saved everything. They had fairly good pantries. Now, my grandmother, my one grandmother, she didn't call it a pantry. She called it a larder. And I think that was still a pantry for my eyes. But I'll tell you one thing. My bulk, my grandmothers could cook. But I'll tell you that what they couldn't do my biscuit recipe, I'd like to tell you, was passed it down from great grandmother to grandmother, on and on and on. And guess what? It wasn't my grand. Neither one of my grandmothers could make a biscuit to save their butt. I and I, I knew what a good biscuit was, and uh, I I knew I wanted to learn, and I figured it out all by myself. Uh, my grandmother, right, actually, uh, when I was way before kindergarten, she had me cooking some things. Yes, sir, she did. And uh, it's, it's been good. It's been good for me to learn. Um, all people have something to fight about. So, once in a while, Barb and I get in just a little bit of a tiff over one thing. It ain't about, I don't want to cook, it's what one of us is going to cook. Cause I like to cook. I'm sorry. I like to cook. I, I do. I enjoy cooking. And uh, I welcome you into our humble little house. We don't have much. And this is a work in progress. Let's tell you straight away. Uh, this, this here place we bought quite a long time ago. Knowing that in the future, at retirement age, we didn't want to live where there was high taxes. And we were able to pay cash for this place. And we don't, it isn't, it's not much. It's not much. But we made it our home. We did, that's what we did. And uh, right up back stands our mules and donkeys. And, well, one draft horse. I still ain't found another one to go with friends. And we're blessed. We don't have much, but the one thing we got, we got love. We got family love. That's what we got. We got that. And so don't most of you. If you don't create it, yeah, make them taters. You'll get some love. Mm -hmm. You'll get a smile. Man, you try it too. If she's out working and you're at home, she's going to say, well, you only made that because you like taters and I don't. Oh, you trust me when you eat them, lady. Mm -hmm. You're going to eat them good. That, they're good taters. They, they really are. Uh, it's probably not on because of the starch and all this. I'm very aware. But sometimes you just plain want good cooking. And you want something with bacon on it. Yeah, you know what I mean? You just want something. Now, from here on out, shortly, we will be eating out of our garden. Uh, we'll be eating early carrots. 
zucchini. About the time you're tired of them zucchini, they die off anyway. They start getting uh, where they're growing too fast. They just, they're not the same as them. Them early ones are good. We're going to make pickles. I haven't made them in quite a few years. When I do, I've got a pickle crock. It stands as high as this island. And I'm going to tell you what, if you have never had crock pickles, you ain't living. And I'll show you how that's done. But if you, you look in that crock and you watch what's going on in them pickles after about a week, you think, I ain't eating them. No, they look like they're fermenting or something. Well, something close. They're pickling. That's what they're doing. Uh, we're planting some Savoy cabbage. Uh, I love coleslaw made with Savoy. But I'll tell you what else I like. I like it made in the sauerkraut because it's, uh, it's not a strong sauerkraut then. How do you make sauerkraut? It's dumb, dumb, stupid. You pack it in a can of jar with a little water. Yeah. And you let that ferment. Mm hmm. That's, uh, that turns to sauerkraut. That's all you do. You don't do nothing. Uh, we do for the, we want to keep it longer. We throw it in one of the canners and uh, cook it off so it comes up to pressure and seals for long term. And that, that Savoy cabbage, I make that in sauerkraut in quarts, not pints. Regular uh, cabbage, like we don't plant some. Yeah, go in the pints. Pints enough, but that that's good. If if you say, well, I don't like sauerkraut, that's because you've never had good sauerkraut. You bought it out of the store, didn't you? You know what I've noticed? Uh, and they've probably done studies about this, but our vegetables and stuff coming out of the store do not have the flavor. They don't. Boy, I love I love all the summer vegetables because they're exploding with flavor. They really are. Our sweet corn, we plant bodacious. That last video got caught off. That's what I was going to tell you. We plant bodacious. If you can find it, you generally got to go to a farm store to, that, uh, you know, supplies four farmers, not some like tax supply. They don't have stuff like that. You might be able to order it online. Uh, you generally get two ears per stalk with that bodacious. They're nice foot long ears. And uh, it's, they're, oh my, my, my. Best out, the best there is out there in my eyes. Uh, I really love that stuff. I really, really do. Um, sorry about the videos lately. You know, what we've been up against, not being able to load. Well, we could a few days ago. When we put that last video up, we had data. We still got a little data now. But we're pounding so hard to try to get this stuff done that has to be done in the spring so we can get back to all the saws because saws are a luxury for me. Uh, my home life and living sometimes gets put by the wayside and I didn't get a bunch of things done last summer or last fall that should have been done. And uh, Chief Cook and Bottle Washer kind of told me that Harvey, you got to figure this out, you know. I'm just telling you once. And she told me about three, four times. And uh, I'm listening. I'm listening. I'm slow to listen. But I have to get this organized where that we can have a nice mix of what's going on on this channel. I have good content for you. I miss you guys when I can't make these videos like I want. I know at some point things are going to settle down, they're going to reopen businesses, it's going to be business as usual, and it's about, hopefully way before then even, my life will return back to normal here shortly. But, I was told that if I like living indoors, by the way, I did get used to living indoors finally. Yeah, I did. Bar's been good to me. So it takes a lot of woman to put up with me, trust me. Yeah, I'm just a kid. Yep. Just a kid. But I'm adapting to living indoors. And she said if I want to continue living indoors, there's a few things that you've put off way too long. And now that Cullen's here, because he's laid off, you'd better figure out how to get this done. 
and you want to go play with your chainsaws and dirt bikes, you do it then. All right, gentlemen, what do you do when you do that? Uh-huh, what do you do? You do the same thing I do. You look around and you say, you know, you're right. I'm sorry. I'm going to take care of business so I can take care of business with you guys. I thank you for showing up. Thank you for being here. I hope you like this kind of video. I read all your comments. Please give me input on what you think. Is this something that once in a while you want to see this type of video? If it is, let me know. Thank you. Goodbye.